Hi. My name is Robin Bremer. I'm an ordained minister, <clears throat> excuse me, and also the author of eight published books, and hopefully a bunch more to come. And today I want to share with you a very, very fun and easy way to witness. Now, I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm not the wit witnessing kind and I don't like to witness. But this is a method that you can memorize very easily and that it is really is a lot of fun. And actually, I got about 20 people saved a day every time I went out and deliberately did this. So it's so easy to do and it's so much fun. Even kids are doing this. And you can do it anytime, any place. You can use any part of this system or method. And it's so easy to memorize. And you can actually hold the script right there and say it. I've held the script right there and read it off in, when I first started. Now, this method, uh, I originally learned from Riley Stevens, who works for Kenneth Copeland Ministry. And I believe he also teamed up with um, some of Rodney Howard Brown's team to put together this method or part of this method. Um, and uh, this is basically how it works. Now, first of all, I want to remind you, and you might say, ooh, I'm not a witnessing person. I just, you know, that's not for me. Well, you are living in this time not by accident. No matter how you were born, you were not an accident. You were created to live in this time because you were empowered to live supernaturally as a witness to God in this time. And when you really, really know Jesus, <clears throat> excuse me, when you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you can't help but witness. Everything about you is a witness and a testimony. And when I say witness, um, uh, you can witness by your life. But when I say witness by your life, I don't mean by being a good person. Because even somebody who is not saved can be a good person. But they're still on their way to hell because they haven't received Jesus in their heart. They haven't, they haven't received life. They're still dead in their spirit. So when I say witness by your life, I'm saying that you were created to live supernaturally. And by witnessing with your life, I'm saying... That even at the office when you go to work and you aren't allowed to, when somebody says, oh, I have a headache, you're not allowed to go over to them and put your hand on their head and say, be healed in Jesus' name. But you can because you carry God's presence and glory inside of you. You are a child of glory. You can walk over to them and impart healing to them simply by touching them. Just go over to them and shake their hand and say, I'm really sorry you're not feeling well today. Can I do something for you? And what you're really doing is you're working undercover. And I do this a lot. I do this in, uh, when I go to churches, uh, when I go to schools, when I go to churches that don't believe in the Holy Spirit, when I um, go and do libraries. I'm, I've got a method undercover. I might not be praying out loud or witnessing out loud, but I've prayed and I got a method. And so <clears throat> you can impart to them healing simply by going over and tapping her on the shoulder or massaging her shoulders. And while you're doing it, to deliberately release your faith. For her to be healed or for her to be saved uh, you can go up and shake somebody's hand who you know hates jesus and doesn't want anything to do with jesus and just smile at them and with your smile you can impart salvation you can deliberately in your heart in your spirit say i release salvation to this person i release and declare and decree that they will be saved they will walk in your presence and power and so you when i say that you are a witness, I'm saying that you need to live supernaturally. Now, I'm going to go on and show you the very easy, fun, and simple method to witness. So basically, how you do this, uh, I noticed with myself, the hardest part for me for witnessing was, how do I approach a stranger that I know nothing about and I don't know what to say? How do I start a conversation? And one of the easiest ways to start a conversation is by having paper, a piece of paper with you or some kind of handout that you want to give somebody. Like um, when I clown at different churches, I teach them how to evangelize. I give them a ticket to come to my show. And on the back of the ticket is the steps that you take to evangelize. And you can just read it right off to them. And they get saved. And you can give them the ticket. It tells them what time. It shows me a picture, a picture of me as uh, Ribbons the Clown with my puppets. And that says what time the church show is, where's the church show at, and what day. Excuse me, and on the back it says steps to getting saved. Well, you read that back off to them about how to get saved, and then you give them the ticket. And then you tell them, you go ahead and save the rest of your family by reading this script to them. 
and then the rest of the family gets saved. So you can use a ticket. Uh, it's a way to get it into their hands. You can knock on the door and ask them if, if you're going to door to door, knock on the door and invite them to this event. Or if you have no event and you're just a church and you want to evangelize the neighborhood, you can knock on the door and uh, ask them if there's anybody sick in the house. Can I pray for you? I know the flu's going around. Can I pray for you? And you just stand there at the door. You don't go inside. You just stand at the door and you pray for them. And another thing that I've done is I've gone door to door with balloon animals. I make balloon animals and I go door to door and I just say, like at Halloween time, and I just say, I just want to, you know, give this, <coughs> give this to you. And I give them a balloon animal. And then I give them a business card or, or a salvation card and ask if I can pray for them and, and get them saved. So there's different methods that you can use. And one of the easiest methods is to have something in your hand to give them an invitation or something. But I can, it gets to the point where you can do it anytime, any place, and it's really fun. So the first thing that you want to do is approach a stranger, somebody you don't know. How do you open up the conversation? Well, uh, the, the first thing you can do is you can go up to them and you say, Hi, um, I was wondering, um, do you go to church anywhere around here? So you're opening up and the, you're opening it up and you're saying, um, you're opening up the conversation right away about church, so they know you're going to ask about church. Okay, so you just go up to somebody. And say, Excuse me, sir. Um, I was wondering, do you go to church anywhere around here? No, no, I don't. I don't go to church. I don't, I don't believe in going to church. And and say, well, if you and then you go and you say this: If you were to die tonight, where do you think you would go? If you were to die tonight, where do you think you'd go? And then some people say heaven, some people say hell, some people say to the morgue, and <laughs> then you'll say, I mean heaven or hell. And if whatever they say, you say, why? Why do you believe that? And let them explain. No matter what they say, you go on to the next step, unless they say, I'm a born again Christian, or they say, I've given my heart to Jesus, or if they say, I'm already a Christian, if, you say, if they say I'm a Christian, they might think they're a Christian because they go to church or are a good person. If they say they're a Christian and then ask them, um, what do you mean? Get a little bit more out of them because they might think they're uh, going to heaven because they, their grandma went to church and they go to the same church your grandma went to church. So get them to clarify it. So the first thing, let's just review. The first thing you do is you go up to someone, excuse me, uh, do you go to church anywhere around here? And then they'll say, yeah, I go up here to this church and that church, or I go to that church. I say, well, if you were to die tonight, where do you think you would go? Answer the question. Then I say, why do you believe that? Why do you believe that? And then that shows me where they're coming from, their philosophy. Well, I'm a good person. I've gone to church all my life. I help little old ladies across the street. I mean, I've heard all this stuff. And so... If they say anything except, I've asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Jesus is in my heart. I'm a born-again Christian. Um, uh, if they'd say anything except having Jesus in their heart, then you go on to this next step. You say, well, and you can quote scriptures. You can say, well, um, John 3.16 says, or John Galatians 3.13 says, and I don't even bother doing that because they don't know the difference anyway. So all I say is, I just try to keep it simplified. I say three things. One, all of us have sinned, and I'm sure you already know that. Because I, I try to talk to them like a person. All of us have sinned. The wages of sin is death. Give, you know, I, I try to talk to them. Okay, so all of us have sinned, and I'm sure you know that. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is life through Jesus Christ. The Word says that Anybody who accepts or asks Jesus to be the Lord of their life or anybody who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. Okay, so those are the three things you tell them. All of us have sinned. The, the wages or the cost. Of, the cost of sin is death. But the gift, the free gift of God is life. And then the next thing is, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You're a whoever. I'm a whoever. So let's do that right now. Okay, so three things. The wages of sin is death. Okay, three things. Sorry. Number one, all have sinned. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of life is the gift of God. The free gift from God is life through Jesus Christ. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Let's do that right now. Just repeat this prayer after me real quick. Father God, I receive your free gift. I call on the name of Jesus. 
Simple as that. Legally, that's all you have to say. You call on the name of Jesus. I, it, I accept the free gift. I call on the name of Jesus. You can go on and you can say, thank you for dying for all my sins. Thank you. You know, you can do that. But God's not trying to keep people out of heaven. God made a way so we all could get to heaven. He wants us to get to heaven. Okay? So make it as simple as possible. And then tell them, you know, if you mess up, if you mess up, don't worry about it. That's why you've asked Jesus into your heart. He took care of all your sins, past, present, and future. And when you mess up, just run to Jesus. Tell him, oh, Lord, you've got to help me not to do this again. I'm sorry I didn't just help me not to do it again. Okay? It's about a relationship between you and the Holy Spirit. It's not about being good or being right. It's about a relationship. The deeper they get in the relationship with Jesus, the more their behavior will follow. Okay? So... You just say, let's do that right now. Repeat after me. Then you say the prayer I just went over. Now, you tell them you're on your way to heaven now. If you died right now, you would go to heaven. Simple as that. you know. But when you mess up, don't run away from God. Just run to Him. Just ask Him to help you to do the right things, to make good choices. Okay? Then, so to review it real quick, you say, where do you think you'd go if you die? Why do you think that? All have sinned. The wages of sin is death. The free gift of God is life through Jesus. And anyone, everyone, whosoever, calls in the name of Jesus will be saved. Let's do that right now. Okay? Now, if they say they're a Christian, and I love to do this, this is so much fun. If they say, well, I, I, I am a Christian, I'm born again, I know I'm on the way to heaven. Then you say, you know what, that is so exciting exciting I am so happy but let me ask you this on a scale of one to five one being not so good and five being awesome how would you rate your walk with God right now are you on fire for God excited or do you feel as though he's way off here in a distance and you just feel so distant from him and then no matter what they say grab their hands and pray for them father set them on fire help them receive everything that you have for them so basically, if, they're all, if they are already a Christian, that's what you do. Because you want to get them on fire. You want to get them excited about God. Now the next thing that you probably want to do is ask them, well, how do you feel your relationship with God is? Do you, do you feel comfortable uh, praying for other people? Do you feel uh, as though your prayer life is really working? And say, have you ever been filled with the Holy Spirit with, and speak in tongues? Because you see, speaking in tongues is a vital and is a, a, a tool that we need to have. We need to have the Holy Spirit. It's through the relationship with the Holy Spirit that we have victory. Without the Holy Spirit, we're, we're going to struggle and struggle and keep going back and doing the same stupid mistakes. So you want them to get filled with the Holy Spirit. So you just ask them, do you speak with tongues? Okay, and then tell them, well, you know... That the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our helper, our partner, and He helps us to pray. And the evidence of that is speaking in tongues and walking in God's supernatural power. Uh, our tongue is, it's our tongue, but it's His language. And what He wants you to do is He just wants you to trust Him to fill you up to overflowing. And when you pray, you can pray whenever you want to in this special language. All you do is it's you speaking, it's your tongue, it's your mouth, but the Holy Spirit is speaking through you, interceding, praying God's perfect will. And you just explain to them that you have to open your mouth by faith and you have to just speak words. Even if it's babbling, the Holy Spirit will take that and make it into His special language. He is interceding. When you're speaking in tongues, you're praying God's perfect will. And who doesn't want God's perfect will? You should never pray in the natural until you prayed in the supernatural. Because you don't even really know what to pray for. So you just lead them and just say, just repeat after me. Just start worshiping God. Just say, Father God, I just thank you. And then have them say, Father God, I thank you. I praise and I worship you. I receive the Holy Spirit. Fill me now. Fill me now. Overflow me. And you just repeat a couple worship or praise things. I praise you. I thank you. And then just say, now. Just let yourself praise God in another language. Just, just pretend, just speak another language. And then you just start speaking. And let them copy you. 
Okay, because you receive it by faith. And the Holy Spirit is a good teacher. He knows what He's doing. So you lead them in receiving the being filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit so that they can be empowered. Now, another thing that you could do when you're right there um, is healing. Or you could do this any time or any place. And this is really fun. I remember one particular time I grew out a lady's leg in the store because her back hurt her. And she was so funny. She was just so excited and, about God after that because he actually... Because in her mind, he actually did something for her that she could see supernaturally. And and so she became on fire for God. And that's basically how it is. When people see the supernatural things of God, and the supernatural belongs to the Christian, remember that. When people can see the supernatural things of God happening in their life, they are never satisfied with nothing else. They're not satisfied with gaming. They're not satisfied with a TV show called Supernatural. They're not uh, satisfied with uh, drugs or alcohol because the supernatural which belongs to the Christian, is so much more exciting and stimulating and high than anything else that the world has to offer. Because remember, it's all a copy. The real deal is with God. So, healing. What you could say to them is, do you hurt anywhere right now? And this is the, still the person you just witnessed to or just got saved or is a Christian and you're ministering to them. Or it could be, you know, your my cue is when I go somewhere and somebody says oh my head hurts that means they're telling me their head hurts and they're giving me permission to change that and because I would go into the store and I knew I had healing power in my hands like every Christian does and then I feel the devil would come on me and say look at that person in the wheelchair why don't you go pray for them look at that person limping over there why don't you go pray for them and it would be overwhelming and I'd feel guilty shamed and condemned and wouldn't do nothing so I said, God, what is it? What should I do? And he says, well, your cue will be when somebody tells you that they're not feeling well. That will be your cue that they're giving you permission to change the situation, to pray for them. And so whether I'm in the Walmart parking lot or in the grocery store, I say, I heard you have a headache. Can I pray for you? Don't close your eyes. Just keep on working. I'll just pray while you're working so you won't get in trouble. And I say, headache, in Jesus' name, I command you to be gone. I speak peace in her life or whatever. And then I say, where's the pain now? Okay, so, so what you want to do is you say to somebody, where do you hurt right now? And now, as a con ventriloquist, when I do my shows, um, I'm beginning, I'm just beginning to walk in this where I say, you know, God still does signs, wonders, and miracles, and I can prove it. And then I go into the audience. I've done this a couple times, but a couple times I've chickened out. I go into the audience and I pray for somebody to get healed. Well, God told me to go into the audience and, and he would tell me who had back pain. And I would grow out their legs and their arms in front of everybody where they could actually see it happening. And I've done this times and I have it on recording. It's so easy to do. I don't know why I have a lot of faith for this, but it's so easy to grow out someone's arms and legs. It's just like natural. And when they see that happening, then they get excited. But I would go out into the audience and, and lay hands on them and pray for them to be healed. And, and, and that wins people over because they see God loves them. So you just say, do you hurt anywhere right now? And then ask them about their back because God said that 85% of people have back pain. So right away you can jump on back pain and you can heal them. And once somebody feels that, everyone around them will, will say, Oh, I have this, this hurts, this hurts, I have this sickness, that disease, and open up the door to pray. So start off with back pain because that's just the, the most common issue. Uh, then pray for it to be healed. Lay hands on them if you can. And if you can't, just stand there with your eyes open and watch. And pray for them to be healed. So you pray for them to be healed. You can keep your eyes open. You can touch them, not touch them. It doesn't matter. You can release your faith through words, through touching, whatever. And then ask them, do something you couldn't do before. Like if they have a headache, just say, can you move your head like that? Or a backache, say, you know, you couldn't do this before it hurt. And have them do that. So have them do something they couldn't do before. Then have them say, thank you, God. Whether it manifested or not, thank God. Because healing always comes. It might not come that second. But healing always has come, always comes and has already been provided for. Then have them thank God and then tell them, tell them to thank God and then say, where's your pain now? And say, oh, wow, there is no pain. I don't have no pain. It don't hurt no more. Okay, so that's the keys on, on how somebody uh, would receive their healing. So that's some different steps on how to teach evangelism in your church, in your community, in your group, in your home fellowship, your study. Um, I would highly recommend that you go to my website, get some of my free witnessing material. Also, I would recommend that you uh, get my books, 
because they talk about walking in the supernatural. And the more you understand who you are in Christ and what Jesus already did for you, the more you'll be walking in that supernatural power, peace, and presence. So my name is Rob Bremer. Go ahead and subscribe to me wherever the su subscribe button is. And uh, this tape will be for my special VIPs and also for my church, Faith Community Church. And um, if you're on Facebook, share and like and check out my website, robinbremer.net. And you have a blessed day. And I just release the anointing of God on you to be supernaturally, naturally evangelistic and to heal people and for you and everybody that you pray for to walk in and to receive God's peace, power, and presence. We'll talk to you later.